What's up, people of YouTube? F Man Craig back, and guess what? Actually, I have some news. What is new? What's this news about? I have officially moved my I review equipment up to my room in my closet. Normally, I do it downstairs, but now, out all of my I YouTube equipment is now in my room, ready for action. And my stop motion equipment in this room. My uh, rev my critic equipment in this room. My comic book equipment in this room. Ooh. So from now on, I'll be doing these reviews in my closet as we speak. I guess you can call this the video closet. That was dumb, wasn't it? All right. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, today's review: Romeo and Julia and Sherlock Gnomes. Now, I want to tell you this, actually. Uh, this movie actually came out on my birthday. Yeah, June 6, 2011. How crazy is that? Uh, originally, I did want to release this uh, video on my birthday. A, but right now I'm too busy. But the time that I'm recording this, it is still my birthday. So, you know how it is. It's the only reason I haven't uploaded it to YouTube till now is because of, well birthday reasons since Sherlock Gnomes took like eight years to make can you believe that actually god damn I hate when sequels do that uh, you know anyway uh, now that we got all that sorted out out today's review Romeo and Julia and Sherlock Gnomes the first first Romeo and Juliet's movie he starts off with a story or retelling from this little red gnome. Um, you think he's gonna be the narration, actually, but truth be told, well, he's not. He's like, uh, because you see, Romeo and Juliet is based off the true story of Romeo and Juliet, two lovers that are supposed to be drift, that are drifting apart because because of their different style or something. I'm not too familiar with Romeo and Juliet. All I know is that they die in the end. Pretty bummer story. I guess someone just decided to take that story, make it about God and gnomes, and make it more kid-friendly, since this one, they don't die in the end, so, you know. So, you know. So, you, so you know. Not gnome. I'm not going to be making gnome puns, I promise. So, Romeo and Juliet. And, like I said, the movie starts off with a little red gnome, going to explain the story, and then, he's, then he tries to explain some... Boring content, but luckily he gets rid of them. Anyway, the movie starts off with these two different neighbors that don't like each other because one of them likes a different color. And that's basically it. But the reason why these two don't like each other is because one of them likes blue and the other likes red. And because of that, at their garden is very different. And, and because of that, their garden gnomes are always at war with each other, calling themselves Horrible blues or wretched reds or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, the movie is basically a little montage about what their lives are like. like and then we start off. And then after when uh, Benny pulls a prank on, on Tibbles, then the real stuff up starts. Anyway, uh, when Nomeo is Nomeo instead of Romeo, it's Nomeo. Oh, he gets ready for a lawnmower race for Tibbles, and, you know, his mum's going to encourage him about it. it. And then we have uh, Juliet. It. She, she, uh, she finds this cool flower called, uh, called a Cupid's Arrow Orchid. Is that a real flower? Anyway, and, and she thinks it'll put the uh, blue god in humiliation if she had that flower. But if... But her father is doubting her, always thinking that she's very del delicate, you know, because they have an entire conversation saying that he, she's delicate. And she keeps going on saying she's not delicate. But, I mean, I mean, it's basically your typical movie about women not accepting their gender roles and like to do something traditionally, which I'm not going to lie, is still cool. I mean, I mean, I do believe that women are more than what they seem, you know, they, they are capable, you know, they are capable than more than us men, you know, oh, I mean, so many people out there have the choice to do whatever they please, no matter what gender, no matter what race, 
They be what they be. be. And no one should get in their way. Anyway, uh... Anyway, uh, no... Mio, uh, has this, uh, lawnmower race with the gnome we saw earlier named Tibbles. Anyway, Tibbles cheats and the lawnmower gets destroyed. Oi, and, uh... And Nomeo decides with his pal Benny, they're gonna they're gonna sneak into that garden and steal their lawnmower. I forgot what the plan was actually. Was the plan was to steal the lawnmower and paint it blue, or was the plan to paint the lawnmower blue as a prank? Right? I, I forgot. Whatever. You know, Nomeo gets Nomeo gets exposed because Benny and he tagged the uh, the well, El and. Uh, he escapes and their plan goes haywire. Here and then uh, Nomeo, oh, sees uh, Juliet. Well, she doesn't see her as a red gnome because she's wearing a black sock so she can get the flower, you know? And then they see each other. They have like some sort of a uh, staring competition. And then they sort of like fight over, a fl fight over the flower, but not in a hatred kind of way, more like in a cute romantic sort of way, you know? But when they found out they're red, but when they find out one another is red and blue, ooh, they realize they can't be together. But Nomeo comes back for her, and they sort of like a uh, have like a head-to-head, head a uh, conversation. Then, then they're gonna go on a date, and then they uh, have a little montage of them getting ready. Then when they're having their date, hey, they discover an abandoned shed, Ed with a. Uh, with an abandoned pink flamingo named Featherstone, who's supposed to be sort of the comic relief. Or is Benny the comic relief? I'm not sure. Well, whatever. The point is, point is, he is uh, supposed to be like their friend, and and then Julia has some time with the uh, law, um, with the abandoned lawnmower that they find. And but during that time, because of Benny's little stunt with the whole tagging the well. L Tibbles has a plan, so you see, a while ago, Nomeo's dad, apparently gnomes have parents. How does this society work? Like, apparently gnomes can have parents, like, like literally, like literally gnomes can have parents. Can they reproduce? Can they be adopted? Seriously, how does this world work? Whatever, apparently this uh, garden has this toilet. I don't know who accessorized their garden with a toilet. I mean, it sounds funny, but at the same time, kind of ridiculous. But anyway, uh, anyway, because of Benny's little prank, Tibbles has a plan to destroy it. And with a scene we, and with something we never see, the thing gets destroyed, and Nomeo is going to attack at the Reds with Weed Killer. When, uh, when Juliet sees him, they kind of have a little argument. Featherstone tries to cheer them up, and they kind of, they kind of get pissed off at Featherstone, and... Featherstone kind of apologizes, but then they feel bad and try to apologize to him. Because you see, Featherstone, he knows what it was li like to love. He too used to have a lover. Or he had a garden of his very own with this two couple. But this two couple had a fight and went through a divorce, causing the woman to move, move and take the female flamingo with her. And then the husband, the ex husband, the man, whatever, throws Featherstone in the shed where he stayed there for years never knowing how long it was as you know and it, you know it was like really sad and emotional you know it really was and then uh nomeo and julia decide to plant the cupid's hour orchid kit in the uh in the garden making it their garden but benny sees nomeo kiss a red she he freaks out nomeo tries to explain but he gets ambushed but Be Benny gets ambushed by Tibbles and gets his top hat at shattered. Like, now he has, like, a Bart Simpson hair. Uh, he has, like, Bart Simpson hair now because of Tibble. And now because of all accident, Tibble accidentally got smashed. smashed. And then doing so, the Reds try to smash Nomeo. But he gets moved into traffic, making it look like he got smashed. But really, it was a blue teapot moved, moved by this uh, truck. That should really close their door, because they're going to lose all their china. Whatever. Shroom, boom, Nomeo's sort of doggy pal. I don't know. Fa 
find out it's not real Nomeo, and Nomeo gets separated by this dog, all leading into this park where he's talking with a statue. And the statues talk? Seriously? Is this world run by Toy Story logic? They don't really confirm, you know? Whatever. And and then Juliet gets uh, glued onto her castle. I'm like, what the hell? Her dad craggled her to her castle? What the actual hell? I know she doesn't want to lose her like he lost her mother. But still, it's kind of it's kind of a dick move, that is. Like, what if she has to, like, do some responsibility duties? Like, like he's supposed to expect her to just stay on that castle to, like, the day the freaking world blows up or something? Seriously, it was kind of horrible. Anyway, Benny wanted to, uh, to, uh, avenge Nomeo by ordering this expensive lawnmower their own that they didn't want to buy because it was too pricey. Anyway, he does eventually do it, and eventually it does come to the garden, but it goes all, but it goes horribly wrong. Not only does it destroy the red garden, but it also backfires and tries to destroy the blue garden. And seriously, who invented that lawnmower? That lawnmower seems very dangerous. It's like, all it does is, like, destroy and wreck things. Like, who made that thing? That thing's crazy. Anyway, Featherstone managed to get uh, Nomeo back, and uh, they both try to save Juliet. And doing so, he tries to, but the lawnmower manages to crash in Juliet's castle, making it look like they both died. I'd, and in doing so, the parents are, you know, sad, and they kind of apologize, and kind of make up and begin a truce or something like that and and actually no me and juliet don't die they uh they live they survived i juliet's no longer glued to the bloody castle thank god and and the owners come home and they and they freaking scream their asses off i wish we could see the expression on their faces it would have been hilarious yes anyway the endings start Arts with Nomi and Juliet and out of all their friends in the, their own garden. And look at that! Tibble survived! How did he come back again? So, like, when a gnome gets smashed, they can die. But when they get glued back together, they get resurrected. Again, how does this world work? Er, and Benny even in orders uh, Featherstone's previous lover, I think. I don't know. Oh, and that's basically the end of that. It was touching, it was nice. And then eight years later, sequel arrived. Sherlock Gnomes. Um, and let me tell you something. This movie is kind of crazy. I'm sort of mixed on it. it. But, you know, it's like... It's like, uh... It's like, on the one hand, it's a Nomeo and Juliet sequel. On the other, it's like... It's basically... It's got more Elton John songs... Plus, uh, plus it's more cartoonier than, than, it's more cartoonier than less seriousness. And it's basically just, it's basically just Sherlock Gnomes, Gnomes and Watson teaming up with, with Romeo, with Romeo and Juliet. It going on, going on a new adventure. I mean, apparently, apparently what happens is, is, uh, Sherlock's nemesis, Moriarty, he, and this dude, he kind of looks like like a character from the Emoji movie. I'm not gonna lie. And this dude, this dude is pretty freaking weird. I mean, look at his teeth. In this entire movie, his teeth go through like weird changes. Like look at this, they're all smooth. They're all aligned. They all look like the same shape. And now look at this one. They're all like bumpy and look like you need to see a dentist. Now they're now they're twice as that. And and now they're about serious. It's like make up your mind, Moriarty. What what do your teeth? What what do your teeth want to look like? Like seriously, that never addressed me, and it really bothers the hell out of me. Anyway, anyway, when uh Sherlock saves gnomes, because apparently uh some ornaments are made for manufacture evil, but Moriarty apparently is the most evilest of the lot. Apparently, he enjoys massacring over glass ornaments that are alive. Until one day he met his nemesis, Sherlock Hook Gnomes. And ever since then, he's been trying to find a way to beat him. And then, in this adventure, sure, uh, apparently it looks like Moriarty got killed. And doing so, oh, Moriarty uh, treats it's Watson like crap. 
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, Jim, the little red gnome for the previous one is also doing the same thing he did in the first one, introducing the story with his friends now, now making a, telling other story names like the Twilight Gnome or Spider Gnome or Game of Gnomes, Gnomes, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, Lord of the Gnomes, I, I don't know, potentially, Potentially funny jokes and sequel material, or not so funny jokes. You decide in the comments. I don't really care. Uh, and uh, apparently, we, uh, what happens is, is the uh, the couple from the uh, previous movie apparently sorted out their issues, moved to London, and uh, moved into a new house. That's where they put all their garden gnomes, gnomes in a new garden. And, and uh you know it's basically and you see what happened is is uh hang on let me get the pick the pick whatever apparently uh nomeo and juliet's Folks have retired, and they put Nomeo and Julia in charge of the garden. And doing so, uh, oh, it's putting, in doing so, Nomeo and Julia gets, like, a lot of responsibilities, looking after the garden, getting tip-top shape. Ape and Nomeo feels a little left out, so he decides to, um, give her a surprise. He looks up Cupid's Arrows Orchids, gets with the help of Benny, now apparently... Having a crush on the uh, frog lady from the uh, previous movie. It was never even confirmed in the first one he had a crush. Which wasn't, uh, wasn't she already in a relationship with that, with that gnome with the big glasses and talks a lot? Oh, the one who gets like a sparkling, uh, sparkling upgrade in, in her mind. Whatever, the point is, it's never really confirmed that much. All I know is at the end of the movie, of course, Benny, Benny and the frog lady are going to, gonna become a thing at the end whatever the point is uh point is when uh when 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 uh nomeo tries to get the flower it backfires making juliet save his ass as doing so moriarty x gets get a uh, moriarty kidnaps her her family and it's up to sherlock or can watson to save the day hey in doing so that's how uh sherlock uh, Watson, Nomeo, and Juliet meet, and they decide to team up. Oh, find their calling card, explain about Moriarty. First, they go into a china shop, uh, where apparently Sherlock pissed off a giant cat thingy. He, they, uh, they get to uh, the next location, and when they meet up with gargoyles. Seriously, gargoyles are alive in this movie? And apparently Watson dies, or does he? remember that now oh uh remember that and so and then uh nomeo gets kidnapped by the gargoyles and taken to where all the gnomes are getting ha getting captured and it's now and now julia and sherlock team up to uh to figure out the rest of the clues and when they do so apparently when they make it to the destination apparently watson was alive this whole time Apparently, when uh, Sherlock uh, no longer had his greatest foe, when he treated him like crap, you know, he... Point is, is, point is, the only way how, uh, how Sherlock can... Point is, if, uh, if more, if Watson pretended to be Moriarty, he could, you know... Point is, is he only did this so he can give, if Sherlock, Locke a middle finger and so he can quit... So he was done being, he was done getting treated like crap from Sherlock. Fuck. But it turns out the gargoyles also turn on Watson. Because truth be told, Moriarty is alive. And you see, his plan was, was to team up with the gargoyles. Was to, so that way the gargoyles can work for Watson. But actually they were working for him. And so when, uh, and so when the right time came, and when the gargoyles turn on, on Watson, and they can take him to his great master plan apparently a Lun the london bridge has this weird thing where the bridge uh has has this uh thing where the gnomes are being capped and when the uh bridge comes the gnomes are all gonna get smashed 
Ash, make, making his biggest score yet. Yes. Manage late, Nomeo manages to uh, hold off the delay. A and Nomeo and Julia end up on a drone. And where, where a 20 minutes climax happened, where, uh, where Sherlock fights Moriarty and he accidentally breaks his leg by Moriarty. He, wait, wait, no one's going to hurt their legs? I know they can be smashed and whatnot and glued back together, but no, in the movie, it, Moriarty stands on what, on Sherlock's leg, making it look like like uh, he has now given him a limp leg now. So wait, 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 can that be healed? Like, like is he permanently stuck with a limpy leg? Like, I, I don't know. Again, it's never really confirmed much. Whatever, of course they managed to save Ava the Gnomes under the bridge. Moriarty ends up, ends up in the river. Uh, the garden's all cleaned up. It ends with uh, Sherlock and Watson solving an, gonna solve another mystery while while uh, while Nomeo and Juliet do have a garden and have a romantic kiss, planting a Cupid's arrows orchid. It's, so uh, that was uh, Nomeo and Juliet and Sherlock Gnomes. Now, are these movies perfect? Uh, but they're okay, I guess. They're not horrible. Well, sir, they entertain children. And then plus, this mo these movies are for kids, so you know it doesn't hurt that much. Uh, the first one's good. Second one's all right. I I mean, quite frankly, if I had to be honest with you guys, I would have just removed Ooh, uh, Nomeo and Juliet from from the second one because because to be honest with you, the movie's just about Sherlock, really. I mean, you could still make a movie that's based off uh, Nomeo and Juliet. Yeah, and still not have them in it. But whatever, it's my opinion. I mean, personally, I was just happy to see Benny have his hat back on again. Like, I was really sad when it got smashed, you know? Personally, I was just happy that he got his hat back, you know? Oh, I mean, I'm kind of mixed if if Nomeo and Juliet should have been in this story, to be honest. Just, I mean, if they're going to make these other movies like Twilight Gnome or Game of Gnomes or whatever... If they're gonna make them, at least, uh, at least don't like use characters from previous movies just to make, just so that way audience can know it's the sequels and stuff, you know? Oh, at least just like make normal no movies, you know what I mean? Whatever, just my opinion. I give Nomeo and Juliet a solid seven out of ten. Same goes for Sherlock Gnomes. They both get seven out of tens. They're pretty good movies, you know. They're all right. They got some questionable qualities, but it's still good. So good. And anyway, uh, to this review shout out, shout out goes to, ah, uh, Chris, Christ, uh, hang on, hang on a minute, got to get the pictures up. This one, uh, uh, today's uh sh review shout out goes, goes to. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. It's just buffering. Give me a minute. Where is it? Where's my minute picks? Ah, oh, here it is. He's a dude on the internet who actually, uh, you know, like, like, he's a dude who goes around on these on these videos who uh, tells you did you know that in this movie and he tells you like an easter egg or a reference point is this dude does it i mean what he does he goes around to any kind of movie and he tells us about stuff like uh like here i'll i'll, I'll pull up a normal movie let's see what do we got here here we got uh we got Wreck It Ralph. We got uh, Toy Story Three. We got Rise of the Guardians. Guardians Frozen. And in those and in those videos, those short little videos, you know, he tells us stuff that we didn't know. We probably missed. Like for example, Ampol.
marked the first time DreamWorks lost money in almost 10 years. They needed a miracle, and they found one. Not only did the cruise perform well, it was so well received that it actually gave DreamWorks one of the greatest box office returns in the studio's history. And for example, like for example, I never knew that. That's a very fascinating in thing to know. Oh, or how about another one on, Ra on Ratatouille? Did you notice this reference to the Incredibles in Ratatouille? When Linguini and Remy are outside the restaurant and Linguini considers hiding Remy's pants, his boxer shorts are visible. If you look closely, you'll notice that the Incredibles logo can actually be seen on them. So get, so get this, uh, look at this channel. No, watch some of his videos. They're pretty good, very interesting, and very fascinating. Anyway, this is the F Mine Critic t telling you to do a like, subscribe, hit notification. See you guys next time. And because from now on, I'm doing these videos in my closet. Well, not my stop motion ones, those ones are on my table. Bye.